Since we know purity equals the molar extinction coefficient of the sample over the molar extinction of the literature, and we know that the literature value of the molar extinction coefficient is given to us, then we can use this formula, absorbance equals molar extinction coefficient times cell path length times concentration, and knowing that the cell path length will be one centimeter, the formula can be easily rewritten as absorbance equals molar extinction coefficient times the concentration. Now if we plotted this on a graph, absorbance versus concentration, we see that the molar extinction coefficient is a relationship between these two. Just like the linear graph equation y equals mx, the slope m is a relationship between the two. Therefore, the slope of this graph would be the molar extinction coefficient. So in order to find the molar extinction coefficient, we need to find the absorbance values for different concentrations. Solutions with different concentrations will be made from a stock solution. In order to make this stock solution, we will start by massing out 0.1 to 0.12 grams of the red crystals. Take your massed out red crystals and put it into a 50 milliliter volumetric flask. In this demonstration, we'll be using green food coloring instead of the red crystals. Carefully add your red crystals into the volumetric flask. Then we will add about 35 milliliters of water to the volumetric flask. After adding water, place the fitted stopper on top of the volumetric flask and shake the flask until all the crystals are dissolved inside the water. Next, you will fill the volumetric flask with more water until you reach the 50 milliliter line, which is located here. Continue to shake your solution to make sure that it's all dissolved in the water. We will now make different concentrations by diluting the 50 milliliter stock solution into separate 25 milliliter volumetric flasks. Go ahead and label the volumetric flasks with a sharpie as 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0 milliliters over 25 milliliters. This lets us know the ratio of stock solution versus the total volume of diluted solution. Continue this procedure by adding 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0 milliliters into the appropriate volumetric flasks. After the volumetric flasks have been completely filled with each appropriate solution, begin adding water until each volumetric flask reaches the 25 milliliter line located at the center of the volumetric flask. Gather six cuvettes. Make sure two opposing sides are completely clear with no scratches and no scuffs. You'll need five of these cuvettes for the different concentrations that you made. Now this other cuvette will be used for an unknown concentration. Mark each cuvette with a number. This will allow you to know which cuvette has which solution in it. Also remember to mark the cuvette with an unknown solution. Now take your solutions of different concentrations and rinse out the cuvettes. Right now I'm using the 0.2 milliliters over 25 milliliters to rinse out the solution. Shake and dump your rinse into a waste beaker. Remember to keep this waste beaker by you to dump all waste into. After rinsing the cuvette, pour the solution you just rinsed it with into the cuvette. Try not to use a camera because you will spill a lot like I just did. Repeat this process with all the cuvettes you have. Rinsing, shaking, and filling up. When all the cuvettes have been filled with the corresponding diluted concentrations, fill your final six cuvette with the unknown solution. The spectrophotometer needs to be calibrated with two cuvettes filled with water so that it knows what water looks like in order to only measure the absorbance of the material dissolved in the water. You will now notice that your cuvette has a clear and opaque side. Fill two cuvettes with deionized water. Place the cuvettes with the clear side facing the hole which the beam of light will come from.
close the lid and go to the Spectro Management Program. Click the Management tab and click Auto Zero. The computer will begin calibrating the spectrophotometer. Once it's calibrated, remove the cuvette with the DI water closest to you and place this separate from the rest of the cuvettes. Take the first cuvette, which should have 0.2 over 25 milliliter concentration solution, placing the clear side facing the direction of the beam of light. Close the hood, and with the Spectro Photo Management Program, click the Start button, and allow the program to measure the absorbance versus the wavelength of the substance that you put in the spectrophotometer. When it's finished, you want to find the highest point on the graph. Since this graph was of food coloring, it will look different than the graph of yours. This one has two peaks, yours should only have one. Click on the highest peak, then using the left and right arrow keys, push back and forth until the absorbance, which is the number on the right, has decreasing values on both sides. Right here, the wavelength is 629 and the absorbance is 0 0.04792. Record these values in your lab manual. Save this file using your initials and the solution concentration. Use a folder set up by your lab tech. Remove this cuvette and repeat using the same procedure for the rest of the cuvettes. Once you've saved all your files, click on File, Overlay, and find all your files separately until you have a graph with all your files overlaid on top of each other. After you have this, print this file clicking the Print button in the top left. Print a copy for you and your lab partner. Take the unknown concentration solution and follow all the same procedures as you did with the others. You should get a separate graph for this unknown concentrated solution. Also print two copies of this for you and your partner. Now it's time to clean up. Take your cuvettes and your diluted solutions and your stock solution and dump these all into your waste beaker. Take your volumetric flasks and cuvette. And using the water from the sink, rinse them out, pouring the rinse waste into the waste beaker. Allow volumetric flasks and cuvettes to dry before putting them in the appropriate places. And take your waste beaker and pour it into the heavy metal waste since it contains heavy metal. After putting up all your materials, including your volumetric flasks, Wipe off the counter and make sure your area is completely clean. Record the amount of waste you produced and tell your lab technician this number. Then gather all the stuff that you brought into the lab and leave the lab exactly how you found it. Thank you for watching this video pre-lab for Chemistry 1441 Lab.